Never one to pass up a target. Three, two, one. Oh, not bad at all. Hello, everybody. My name's James. This is Angry Birds Journey. It's out live everywhere. It's been in soft launch for a bit, but now iPhone, iPad, Android globally, you can download it. And in some ways, it's a return to the classic Angry Birds of 10 years ago, but it's also doing a bunch of stuff that's quite different to attract a new audience, and I'll, I'll explain why. So if you remember back to 2009, then this was one of the first touchscreen gaming classics, Angry Birds. Like, it was one of the things that made the touchscreen sing because it was a game that worked better on a touchscreen than any other platform. The dragging, the pullback, the slingshot mechanics, it was what made it an entertaining and immediately sort of tactile, fun experience to do this business where you're like, Ooh, yeah, where shall I go? That stuff was immediately engaging for a huge audience and it kind of helped birth the modern mobile gaming scene. Oh, I completely messed it up. Let's go downwards with this silver bird. Then the years passed, the gaming landscape changed, things went from premium to free to play, and the birds, they tried to branch out. Branching, because of because uh, birds and... <clears throat> yeah, they tried to branch out, and so we had Angry Birds RPGs, we had Angry Birds Match 3s, we had an Angry Birds Kart Racer, which was, like, really good if it had more than two tracks on it or whatever it had. And it's, you know, it had its ups and downs and successes and arguable failures. This is trying to take the original magic of, like, look, we're just slingshotting birds into stuff and then stuff explodes, right? That's what Angry Birds used to be. But this is different. So... You'll notice that when I pull back and release the birds, you can see that dotted line which shows you the trajectory of where the birds are going to go, right? This bit. Now, in the early games, if you look back, you'll see that that trajectory fades out quite quickly. So you'll only be able to see, like, the first maybe, like, five or six pips, and then it will vanish. And you're left kind of having to guess, having to estimate, where is this going to land? I don't know. And just kind of using skill and judgment. Here, they're doing something different. Here, they're showing you exactly where it's going to land. So this bird's going to shoot downwards, right? Because it's a silver one. I'm going to aim it exactly there. So I want it to hit the TNT. Let's go. See, that was an easy shot because I knew exactly where it would go. So what this game is doing, and we've talked about this over on the website. So if you go to pocketgamer.com, you will see we've done an interview with the two creators or the lead designer and the, and the project lead on the game to say like, so what were you doing with this one? What was this all about? And they've talked very openly that they're trying to do something different and capture a different kind of audience because this is much more about strategy. This is not about, can I make the shot? This is about, which shot do I want to make? So I'm going to have to hit this bird immediately because they need to touch the floor in order for the cage to break. It's not so much about like, ooh, I don't know where this is going to land and I'm just going to have to eyeball this and hope I hit the thing. And then there's that extra layer of when the birds have powers. There we go, we've unlocked Stella now as well. When the birds have powers, you would have to tap in midair to activate them. So I'm thinking about the triangle bird. You used to tap it in midair and it would split into three. Remember that? And have a kind of cluster bomb effect. That's not how these work now. The powers are activated when you make contact with a pig or a block or whatever. Stella's still got her bubble, I see. So now it becomes like, right, I know what the power is going to be. I know when it's going to execute. It's going to execute the moment it hits. Like that. You see? So, the thought behind it, the trick, the challenge, is in the placement. The exact placement of the right bird at the right time into the right block or the right supporting structure. So it becomes about reading the environment a little bit more and less about the kind of outright in some cases luck of just flinging your bird and hoping it will land in the right place but also there was a kind of physical skill involved in that as well which i think has been downplayed a bit here to bring in an audience that maybe felt alienated by the fact that they just couldn't clear that level or they you know couldn't kind of master that bird now that's going to annoy people i can already feel people going what no skill no stumming down of games this is a disgrace and all the rest of it and i kind of Sort of sympathise, but Angry Birds has always been a very casual game. There was a skill element to it, but it was supposed to be just a time waster, a bit of fun. And to be clear, all of those games are still obviously there. They're not vanished from the App Store or anything like that. So you can still go back and play those ones if you like. This is trying something a little different. The stuff that has improved for this, or I think they've really mastered, is everything's a bit more zoomed in. All the characters appear a little bit bigger. The environment's a little bit more constrained. The original Angry Birds, when you look at them, it was zoomed right out in some cases. So there was kind of a big 
gap between you releasing and then knocking them down. And that's not the case here. It's all compacted into these single screens and then the screens basically become waves. So I'm going to bubble about here, I think. That kind of explosion and then it vaults forward. Quite nice. So the other thing is the tactile feedback feels a little bit sharper, a little bit more subtle. And so you're getting really nice, satisfying vibrations when things explode. And generally, the animations, the bit where everything kind of gears up to explode and then explodes, that little moment before launch where it's like, and bam, it, it's nice, feels good. Like they've got this stuff down because yeah, they've been doing it for a long, long time. They've been running this franchise for a bit and they know how to make a pig explode or a bird fall down in a way that feels kind of satisfying. So that's nice, even if it's nothing particularly new. As for the audience, like, I don't think there's a hardcore group of people playing Angry Birds will be, like, hugely outraged by the fact that this is appealing to a slightly different audience or that the mechanics feel a little bit different because it's it's not a hardcore game. It's a, it's a little light puzzler. Obviously, it's got the free-to-play model, and when you first download it, you get effectively 24 hours of gameplay at full energy. You'll never run out, so you can just go and go and go, which is obviously handy. After that, I think you'll get a certain number of failures or a certain number of attempts per day, unless you pay gold and cough up and use that to unlock extra energy or probably additional birds. And you obviously got that little uh, bird power-up thing where they get angry and you can activate special powers, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you could, uh, you know, maybe buy a little a couple of updates for additional powers, that kind of thing, you know. Um, so it's embracing the, the modern models in that way. I will say that having played pretty much all the Angry Birds games, it feels quite satisfying, and it's a nice little wrinkle of difference. Like, I still like the original one going way, way, way back when. I like the skill component. I like the fact that you're not necessarily guaranteed to make it, you had to work for it. It really made you work for it. And this is a different beast. Whether you enjoy that beast, whether it's your kind of Angry Birds, remains to be seen. But if you want to give it a download, now is the chance. Angry Birds Journey, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.